So if you want to know why meditation is good for you and the reasons that you should get into doing meditation daily, then in this video I'm going to go through a load of the benefits, I'm going to explain how to get into meditation and I'm also going to demystify some of the most common misconceptions I hear about meditation. So welcome to The Power of Helping, my name's Ruben Wax and I'm a trainee counsellor and I'm passionate about improving people's lives so that they're then in a better place to empower those around them. I can happily say that meditation has completely changed my life. After going through severe burnout and dealing with chronic stress and anxiety, meditation was the first thing that I did when I wanted to change the direction that I was going and that was four years ago and I genuinely can't imagine my life without it now. So you know the mental health charity Mind, they recently shared this statistic that approximately one in four people in the UK are going to be dealing with a mental health problem in the next year. That means that there's approximately a one in four chance of you dealing with a mental health issue in the next 12 months. And so meditation is a great way of reducing those odds and at the same time giving you a multitude of amazing benefits such as reducing the amount of stress hormones in your body, improving your attention and focus and making you less prone to negative thoughts. And so I'm going to get back to the benefits of meditation but I really think the best place to start when you're considering getting into it is to go through and demystify some of the most common misconceptions that we hear about it. So the misconception that I hear most regularly from people goes something along the lines of meditation is you sat with your eyes closed thinking about nothing and I tried it once and I just thought about stuff the whole time. It's obviously not for me. But meditation takes practice. It's just like any other skill. Like if you take swimming for example, if you'd never had any lessons and you'd never practiced and I put you right into the deep end, what would happen? You'd drown. So you need to take some time to spend some time in the shallow end of the pool and practice and even enjoy it. We have a relaxation response in our brain and just like how any other muscle gets stronger, our relaxation response improves the more that we practice. And so of course when we meditate, our brain is going to send thoughts to us or we're going to daydream. But when that happens, the idea is that you recognise that you have gone off into a daydream and then you bring yourself back into the present. That's the muscle that we're flexing when we're practising. And so in time, that will happen less and less and you'll become better at spotting when you have gone off into a daydream. And one thing that Dr Rongan Chatterjee said that really helped me on my journey was that even if you do daydream for the vast majority of the meditation, you're still going to get a load of the benefits from having done it. One important misconception to touch on is distractions. Now people can often think, oh that noise, that car that went past, that bird that was tweeting, that took me out of my meditation. But actually meditation is being present. So recognising that there is a noise and letting it pass through and then staying in the present that is the meditation. Okay, so how to bring in daily meditation? Well, arguably the hardest part of meditating is just the sitting down every day and getting to it. So a few essential tips would be to pick a place where you're not going to be disturbed, to do it in the morning because then you reap all the rewards for the rest of the day, and then lastly, put it into your routine between two things that you do every single morning, such as going for a morning walk or getting out of your shower and then having breakfast. And you just agree, I won't do the having breakfast until I've actually sat down and meditated. One crucial element to building in this new habit is to make it a short enough time where you feel like you just couldn't say no. So let's say 60 seconds. Because building the habit is way more important than any individual meditation. Let's say you meditate for 60 seconds for the next month. That's going to be way more beneficial for you than doing it once a week for five minutes. Because then you've got a habit that you can build upon as time goes on. And next week's video is on how to make habits stick. So when that's out, I'll put it in the description below, put it in the cards above and you can use that to build in your meditation practice. And if you've actually tried meditation and you struggled or you've got some useful tips, please let me know in the comments below. I'd really love to read them. Another really important point when you're getting into meditation is where you're going to meditate. And actually, it doesn't matter whether you meditate on the floor, on a cushion, in your chair or even in your bed. What matters is that you're comfortable so that you're not spending the whole time worrying about whether your back is arched or your muscles are tense. Just do it however it's comfortable for you. Okay, so a few things that I do every day when I meditate that have properly changed the game for me are one, when I sit down to meditate, I'll do three really deep breaths in through my nose and out through my mouth and that just brings the focus into my body and into the present. 
The second thing I do is a body scan with my eyes closed from the top of my body, slowly down through to my feet and then up from my feet to the top of my head. And then the last thing that I do is when I'm meditating and I'm having quite a lot of thoughts come into my mind, which does happen, especially now whilst I'm doing this YouTube channel, is what I'll do is I'll do some visualizations. Now, they might sound a bit <laughs> ridiculous, but they really do work. And I would say don't underestimate how powerful they can be. So when you have a thought that's coming into your head or you're off in a daydream, don't try to disregard it. Really think, what was I just thinking about there? Because when you focus into what those daydreams are, they actually last much less time. So what you wanna do is then, I've got two visualizations I use. One is I, with my eyes closed, I imagine a river flowing in front of me. And then when I have a thought that's really coming into my head or I'm daydreaming, when I recognize that I have, I'll send that thought down the river. And then the other one that I use is that once I've really looked into what I was thinking about, then I'll turn that thought into a cloud and I'll send that off. I know it sounds quite ridiculous, but I assure you it really does help. And the last thing when it comes to getting into meditation is for beginners, I can't recommend using guided meditation apps enough because we are just gonna daydream and think about stuff and we will inevitably judge ourselves or beat ourselves up about it. So what the guided apps do is they're talking pretty much the whole time. So you're gonna be constantly bringing yourself back into the present of what they're saying. They're also just gonna tell you what to do, which really helps. And they'll also introduce you to loads of the basic theory and understandings of meditation, which is gonna help you because then you'll understand what you're actually doing and what are the benefits to you and what are you actually trying to achieve with this. So for me, I can't recommend Headspace enough. Once you get through the beginning course, they do start to introduce a bunch of the different lessons like gratitude and controlling your emotions and it really will shape your understanding of what meditation is. After that, I really recommend uh, Calm. I recommend Sam Harris's Waking Up and I've just heard about Budify as a cheap option. So stress is obviously a massive one for me because of my own personal history with it. And Dr. Rongan Chatterjee often cites a study that shows that 80 to 90% of all GP visits are somewhat related to stress, which means that if you reduce the stress in your life by meditating daily, you're actually gonna reduce the chances that you're gonna to have to go to see a GP every year. So in simple terms, meditation, it reduces the amount of stress hormones being released in our body because breathing is information. So when we are having short, fast breaths, it's telling our brain that something's wrong and it's gonna prep us for a high danger situation. But when our breaths are slow, and especially when our out breath is longer than our in breath, that sends signals to our brain that you're calm, you're relaxed, and you're safe. And that's gonna put you into a thrive state with much less stress. Another great benefit of meditation is reducing your tendency to have negative thoughts. And that works because in meditation you can practice when a negative thought comes up, you can recognize, oh look, there's that thought again. I've been here before. But that's not me actually saying that. That's not a part of my core self. And then that translates into real life when you're doing stuff and one of those negative thoughts come up, you can recognize that's a different part of my consciousness saying that, that's not actually me. And it works the same for controlling emotions because what you can do in the meditation is you can bring certain emotions up and that shows you that your emotions are in your control. And so then out in the real world, once you've done this practice enough, if you're really angry at a situation, you can recognize, oh look, there is that emotion. I. I, there is anger in me, but I'm not anger. Like I am not the personification of anger. And you can recognize it's there, name it's there, focusing on it, and then just let it go. And that is a place that you can get to with meditation. So another few benefits are, it can really help you sleep because it puts you into a more relaxed state for the day. It can actually improve how kind and compassionate you are through certain meditations. And it's also just building up another habit, which is just flexing that habit building muscle and it's gonna improve your willpower. It's gonna improve your focus and attention because they're also like muscles. And so when you do that every day, it's gonna improve those. And it's a perfect antidote for our scrolling culture now where every single few seconds we're focusing on something new. And so the end goal of meditation isn't just to be mindful in the meditation, it's actually to bring that mindfulness into your life. We're actually quite unconscious in our day to day. And what do I mean by that? Like if you think about how many times have you pulled your phone out and checked your messages and then you've come to and you realize, I didn't even realize I was doing that and put your phone away. 
by meditating, it can start to make you be more conscious of your actions in your day-to-day -day life. So to summarize everything we've been talking about, meditation, it's easier than you think. It's just about being present. And if you do daydream, don't beat yourself up because it's all beneficial. You're just building that habit and you will get the rewards anyway. And look, with meditation, you're not gonna feel amazing straight away. But with time, the benefits, they really start to add up. They compound over time. So just stick with it and you're gonna find that you have more energy, you're more compassionate, and you just generally feel happier with your life. So give it a go, I can't recommend it enough and I think you'll be surprised at how much of a difference it does actually make. So thank you for watching The Power of Helping and if you feel like you've got some value from this video, then please consider hitting the like and the subscribe button below. And if there's someone you know that you care about and you feel like they could really get something from this video, then please consider sharing it with them. And next week is all about making good habits stick and getting rid of bad habits. So I'll see you then.